朗朗现在这个事业正在往上走。他从从两岁就开始在琴上，一直到三十岁，我想他的这个呃艺龄已经都二十八年了。我觉得他成长起来。确实是很不容易，不但是他不容易，就是整个我们这个家庭。郎朗跟我也说，我还是希望你跟着我，毕竟是自己的妈妈，各方面照顾能周到一点我的志向就是，郎朗要当世界一流钢琴家。我俩呢，都特别想喜欢这个，所以说后来我们走到了今天。会有多大成功，我们还不可想象。Both of my parents had their music dream. Somehow they achieved a little bit, but not much. And they basically gave the hope that their son will finish their childhood musical dreams. Lang Lang is a real example of brilliance honed by punishment. Lang Lang's father fostered a kind of almost lunatic competitiveness. I don't know how he survived. He obviously has done, and to be such a joyous sort of performer and a very joyous person, I think he has immense personal unaffected charm. A lot of other people would not have survived. He has an extraordinary facility, a very unusual sensitivity of how he reacts to 
harmony changes to mood changes. Lang Lang has become a worldwide phenomenon, playing sell-out concerts wherever he goes. But his expressive style draws criticism too. He's seeing things through modern eyes. So his approach to playing is possibly different from the norm. Performers in the past got outrageous reviews for what they did because they were different. Partly the critics think it's ego from Lang Lang. What they miss, perhaps, is his genuine personality underneath that. He's able to bring music to the masses. Now, that's a real gift. <笑>他这两个月相当于要做两年的事情基本上我是以<笑> 奥运的广告他是和中国有一个百米的跨栏的一个最优秀的选手刘翔朗朗就在这个十二买八里他一直起子这是刘翔的个记录我们在这个朗朗拍摄的这些广告的间歇接受一些媒体的采访他完成了三
people think, oh, this is out of control, this is too much. The green-eyed monster of jealousy plays its part. I mean, when Liszt was alive, Liszt, the ultimate showman, possibly the greatest pianist that's ever lived, hugely flamboyant, and oh, people hated it. He's in a way unbelievably famous in the West as the Chinese pianist. And he's unbelievably famous in China as the pianist who was able to transcend his Chineseness and become an international classical music star. He's been very canny in playing the cultures against one another. Lang Lang grew up in the industrial city of Shenyang in northeast China, where his father was a factory worker. But he harbored a secret ambition. My 不到一岁的时候吧就是培养看看吧。如果他能发展，那我们就接着培养。他爸也教二十分钟之后抱下来，过了两个小时或者是过三个小时，完再次再抱上他，这样的谈。During these short breaks, Lang Lang was allowed to watch cartoons on a small black and white television. The cat's gone turtle from the Tom and Jerry. Cartoon. I can still feel that almost like yesterday. Tom was dressed up in a tuxedo, his tail, you know, and, and, and it's a white tie. You know. And for a Chinese kid that time, you know, we, we don't normally wear those stuff. And, you know, and start playing. And then he wakes up the little mouse. Jerry. Start fighting with... Getting faster, faster. And then the way the cartoon made his hands almost like a Italian spaghetti. You know? <laughs> Being a pianist is cool. And I thought it was a lot of fun. And you have the, the white keys and the black keys. It's kind of almost like a game. But then I realized it's not a game. It's, it's a lot of practice. Did you, from the very beginning, you were a tough taskmaster? 因为练基本功的时候呢，他需要有一种毅力。完了呢，需要这个团队的成员有个速度。我当时呢，因为我是在部队这些文工团嘛，这么多年，有部队这种这种顽强的作风，要不就给他打红旗，要不就按照这个专
I don't listen to him. He got really mad. He said really some some really serious stuff, and and I got a real bad time with him sometimes. You know, he uh, he made me cry. Uh, you know those things, and he tried to scare me. <laughs> you know, if I don't do right things, and, and so yeah. Whatever natural flair or talent you have, you have to hone it. You have to, it's a craft. And I think the brilliance at the beginning, as you go on, has to become more and more something you work at. The bigger the talent, the harder you, you discipline it and, 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 and hone it all the time into something uh, that, that has a huge foundation behind it. The teacher has a huge responsibility. His father found out that I was the best teacher there in Shenyang at the time, and he wanted me to teach him, so he br brought him to my house. And the first impression was, oh, such a brilliant kid. He had a very strong will, a determination at such an early age. And uh, he said he would practice hard. He is willing to do anything in order to be a good pianist. His father always came with Long Long. When I taught Long Long anything, he was studying at the same time. Very, very intelligent person. So he was helping Long Long in, on this side, musically, a lot. He loves his mother. He has very strong emotions, especially for his mother. And uh, his father is someone that, although he was afraid of him, but he needs him also. I think his relation to his father, love and hate. <laughs> but also later on, he understood that his father helped him a lot, on the other hand. In China now, everybody wants a little bit of the Lang Lang effect. You can see little children as small as five who are absolutely enthralled by watching him. Now, there aren't many children that would normally go to a classical piano recital and sit quietly and listen, but they are. This, he communicates to children, so I think he's inspired them. The piano is increasingly popular in China. There are said to be 40 to 50 million children learning to play and a growing demand for more instruments. This factory in Guangzhou, one of the biggest in the world, makes over 120,000 a year. Some attribute this interest to Lang Lang's influence on a generation of Chinese children. The piano has become the focus not just for musical achievement, but for the prestige, wealth and success that a childhood studying music can bring. Now Lang Lang has opened his own music school in Shenzhen in South China, one of the fastest growing cities in the world. Education, you really need to really spend time and make efforts. I don't have a lot of personal time, but I think it's worth it because I think I can really influence other people. And I really enjoy doing it. school officially started right after the Chinese dragon year so it's a it's a good year you know <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I'm actually this year I'm turning 30 so it's a kind of a new milestone for, for my life as well yeah. but you need to put everything into the hands getting deeper but not loud mm -hmm. not loud intimate 
Vai, vamos lá. Make sure you have the. Then hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rest now. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we off here. Off. Off. Yeah. Yes. It's too loud. Too loud. Too loud. Too loud. Too loud. Really wonderful playing, already. And I feel the. The way he plays very serious, you know, like a little gentleman. Yes, yes, that's right. You need to be more careful. Like a cat, okay? The cat walks. Nice. Boom, boom, boom. Changing colors. Hand need to be precise from from soft. Yes. They need to connect, no matter what piece they're playing, whether it's hard or simple. They need to bring a whole planet into their interpretations. How we react, the chemistry from music, the chemistry from the harmonies, you know. And for us, the important thing is not only the students get it, but teachers get it. First challenge for us is to train the teachers. So today we have a new audition. I think that for children's education, first of all, first of all, they should let them be interested in music, in music.我这次的面试上，我觉得对于我来说确实是很难的一一次机会。思路非常明确，嗯，啊，希望你把这个，好吧，好，谢谢。你这样吧，好好练音节吧。C 大调爬音 ，C 大调<音> ，A 小调。With、students, I intend to be a little bit softer, you know. But with teachers, you know, come on, we are all adult. A 小调。是，因为我自己基本功就不扎实。最基础的东西，这 C 大调、A 小调这。你知道，我建议你每一天练音节吧。你你，我建议你每天练一个小时。嗯，是。稍微慢一点。She's not upset. She's not very happy about herself. I'm just saying, please play the scales, and I like to know. And when she didn't do well, she knows it, and then she feel feel a little bit、uh, weird. Uh, so she started to cry a little bit. But but I I think it's a, it's absolutely、uh, normal. 
you know, when, when I'm not doing well, I will cry too. We need to be critical to ourselves. You can't just let it go. Of course, bringing the passion and love to music is necessary, but we also need to find a really nice method to show one step at a time how do we achieve on the keys. The 1960s was a period of political upheaval in China. The Cultural Revolution was Chairman Mao's attempt to create a classless society through a series of radical reforms. Anyone suspected of spreading Western influence or promoting capitalism was persecuted. I 嗯，在台上表演演出，就是说也是童星吧。我们家呢，好像我爸爸就是说出身不好，如果呢，就是说你要是报考呢，但是这个成分、家庭成成分肯定是不行。During the Cultural Revolution, according to Mao, every young person has to be uh, uh, accepted re-education, sent to the countryside uh, apart from family, planned the rise. So I was there too. I went to the countryside working like a, a farmer. Anything from the West is something bad, something like that. I think I stopped playing piano for eight years. One day, we suddenly hear all the speakers turned on. We don't know why this, this funeral music started. And it says, Mao died. As soon as I heard Mao died, I went back, packed my belongings. I said, I'm going home now. <laughs> Long Long's father and mother, they love music. They themselves wanted to be good musicians, but they didn't have the chance to. But then they put all their hope on their child.
after the Cultural Revolution, when China's door getting opened up again gradually, the piano became the first instrument. Even during my time, when you are, you know, you are in the piano competitions, there are like thousands of uh, applicants, you know, in a small town, not big towns, you know, thousands of kids, you know. Professor Zhu, uh, from the very beginning, gave me every week a new Bach work, and I need to memorize it for the next week. We, that is, the Soviet Union, the Army Choir, that is, there are many children who are playing the piano. We have set the time at 6:00. 嗯、呃，起来就是练琴，但是呢，他接受这个挑战。For such a kid, so talented like Long Long, he should expose himself to a wider music world. And Shenyang is a local place, you see, it's provincial. Culturally, it's not a good place. So we decided that they should go to Beijing. We have only nine conservatories in the whole country. In order to get into that level, before going for the examination, they have to stop two years just to stay home and practice eight to 10 hours every day. Mom actually told me that she's leaving tomorrow to go home. And I said, can you take me? And she said, no, 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 you're staying here. I'm going back. Then I realized my life will be changed forever. The reality has become quite cruel. You know, that moment I, I felt kind of lost. We were actually living in the slum area. So I didn't like Beijing so much. Thank you. Beijing people like to have a long evening having fun. So they can't get up in the morning like 5.30. So gradually they're falling asleep and we already start playing. Uh, kind of a boring stuff, it's you know, the scales. And then the chords, and then the octave scales. And it just, uh, I think, drove them nuts. One <laughs> With only a few months to go before Lang Lang would sit the entrance exam for the Beijing Conservatory, a new teacher was urgently needed. I knew it was 
something was wrong. The first time when I went to her apartment it was in a very dark hallways. You know? And you see this tiny woman came out. What do you have? What else do you play? Run! This is bad! No talent! This is horrible! You shouldn't play piano anymore. So you still have to go to the second level to compete. You will not, never get into the conservatory. You will never become a pianist. Go home, do something else. She fired me, so. You put her in a jar, so it's a child. Dr. Lala, the little lay, I told her. In general, I'm going to do one dollar. We are to see you go. So, one year, you don't take a mail, wait a little eager, they don't shank her. Dr. Yapunang, you know. You know, I'm a little woman with that. What I'm going to say. 我真好，那你跳楼，要不吃药，这两种。当时，这个正好桌子上有有那个有那个，呃，有那个消炎药，我也跳楼，你这这最后咱咱不活了。朗朗要吃药的时候，他突然间想起来，他说我没错，我凭什么吃药啊？这么的，他突然间他有一个借口，所以说他就当时就也疯狂的向我扑来。完了，也也是的，这个，啊，用手，用手也是来来来，跟我这个来来往我身上这个打，使劲打。完了，当时我，他说我没有错，我没有错，我我为什么要吃药？后来我也就，这个这种情况下，我我。On that day, the nine-year-old Lang Lang vowed that he would never play the piano again. Lang Lang's performances because I've heard a joyous quality and that is is very heartening it's wonderful to hear people with this utter delight in performing he's a born performer he loves being out there it's almost easy for him to play the piano in a sense, playing the piano itself doesn't mean anything. What means something is what you make of the music and what your insights are and how you really explore that music. The good thing about Lang Lang is he's always exploring. He's always playing music he hasn't played before. And I think that's part of every artist's growth. Nobody should be playing in their comfort zone. In a curious way, I sometimes think that his triumphs as a musician are partly a matter of winning a competition with his father, of his father having always said, you're never really going to measure up to this. And he finally said, you know what? I can actually do it. I can do it better than even you had in mind. You just wait and see. Enraged by the encounter with his father, Lang Lang hadn't played the piano for months. 
One day, dejected and alone, he wandered into the local food market. Tapping the surface of a watermelon to see if it was ripe, Lang Lang caught the attention of the stallholder, a man whose friendship would change Lang Lang's life. I say, yeah, I was a retired pianist. And they were, how old are you? I'm nine and a half. You retired? Are you crazy? We were talking together. We were talking together. I was talking to him. He was talking to me. 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 The man who became a lifelong friend was duly named Uncle Number Two. Uncle Number Two actually cooked for us that evening. A lot of uh, good, fresh meat uh, from the market. I didn't want to talk to my father, so he's the one, you know. I talked to him, he talked to my father. And then my father talked to him and he talked to me. Uncle Number Two was the peacemaker who reconciled father and son. But nine-year-old Lang Lang was still not playing the piano. But in due course, after weeks of defiance, Lang Lang finally submitted. Uncle number two brought the family together just in time. Soon after, Lang Lang took his entrance exam for the Conservatory of Music. After months of anguish and years of practice, Lang Lang was finally enrolled as the number one student in China's most prestigious music school. But even number one at the Beijing Conservatory was not good enough for his father. Lang Lang now had to prove himself on a world stage. Lang Garen entered him for an international competition in Germany and to increase his chances of success, they brought with them a new teacher, Professor Zhao. His teaching Pianists who were studying at the conservatory were to be chosen to represent China at the competition, and Lang Lang was not chosen. It was possible to enter the competition privately. It was unbelievably expensive, so that um, it required enormous sacrifice. If you do all of that and then you fail, you really look like an idiot. So they went off to Germany. Lang Lang worked and he worked and he worked in his unbelievable tireless way. His father coached him through it, talked about the other competitors, did a kind of strategy almost as if it were a football game of figuring out, okay, if this one does this, you do that, and if this one does that, you do this, and sort of setting the whole thing up. I mean, really experiencing it in the most kind of sporting competitive terms. Becoming a pianist, it entails so many different factors. It's an art, but it's also a sport. It has 
sport element. Physically fit and physically pliable, fast. If a youngster is properly nurtured, it is when that youngster has learned to walk the path, to become the journeyman in search of the truth. When that happens, then that's success. Afterwards, someone said to Lang Lang, you know, when you won, your father was in tears. And Lang Lang said, my father is incapable of tears. But it was still not enough for Lang Guren. Following his triumph in Germany, Lang Lang entered the Tchaikovsky competition in Japan, perhaps the most prestigious of all piano competitions. This would be Lang Lang's greatest challenge yet and required him to play with an orchestra for the very first time. I prepared quite well. I was watching video. And so television is here, right? So my piano is there. So kind of, you know, learned from the video and I actually played like karaoke, you know. That's the way I, I learned how to play concerto. Miss my mom so much at the time. Very painful when I think about it because it's helpless. Like exactly like like the music. Chopin wrote it for his first love, you know. And I kind of my father and also my teachers, you know. Can you just think about how longing you are for your mother? So then I start fitting in and I played the, the second movement really beautifully, but not thinking about some thinking about some girl I, I love not, not like that but just loving for my mom Extremely exciting. I mean, this is the the Queen's Jubilee. I mean, this is such a great honor to uh, to be performed for for her many uh, people tonight around the world. A little bit, uh, maybe. Uh, Thank you, Joan. It is truly, truly exciting. I
It's a human quality he has that a lot of prodigies lose that social ability to interact because they're locked away in a room all the time. You know, they're under that really harsh regime. So you've got a very strong personality to come through that with the capabilities to be a concert pianist and still retain your personality. Hi, Lang Lang. You're going to do something with the two cellos for us. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. It's yeah. great to meet you. Yeah. Wow. Such a pleasure. No, yeah. same to meet you. Yeah, such you a pleasure. You are fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have a photograph? Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. He's very excited by the Royals. It's something China doesn't really have. And to be part of that Jubilee concert for him, especially amongst all the royalty of British rock and pop, we got a real kick from that. Great things. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nice shoes. Uh, thanks. And brooch. Especially for anybody called Tony and King. We want to pull that. Mail, 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 mail. The kitchen made a pretty good Chinese food for me. It is. Very good. Mm. One of the biggest problems with classical music at the moment is there's an old guard that's still alive and still active in uh, critique of classical music. And he is everything that they hate. He's popular, he has his own power, allows him to make his own decisions. But they also recognise he's everything they need. Every concert seems to be a growth in audience size. Every CD sells more than the last one in a, in a decline in market. You know, that's proof in itself that he's got something. Here we go. Queen's Jubilee begins. Yeah! It's like, oh, there is the, the library. Right. Oh. Basically, Lang Lang's personal relationships are his parents. He has occasional girlfriends, and, you know, they tend to be people that aren't in the music business. Every day. Because this is what he earns more than anything, is to have a little bit of normality. Oh. He'll never have a normal life, Lang Lang. He knows that. But he, would lo he loves do doing the mundane because he's still coming to terms with the fact that there might be more to life than just playing the piano. We're putting on um, a classical experimental night oh. um, in a nightclub. Yeah. DJ right. classical music. Oh yeah, DJ. Yeah. Versus classical, yeah? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, how long are you going to be in Oxford for? Uh, today, and then, and then I come back uh, the day after tomorrow. Okay. For concert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> People often ask me about the influences in my life. Well, my father was relentless in pushing me to practice harder every day. Professor Zhu emphasized the importance of recreation, rest, and play. At age of five, I won the first prize, uh, but I still remember uh, that night before uh, the competition, I got overexcited and I went to uh, bathroom. Uh, I, I went to toilet mm. ten times. Yeah. <laughs>
I think it is a great shame that he did not come in contact with a lot of other subjects, literature, philosophy, or painting. Uh, he has sort of had to catch up with that sort of scratching <laughs> the surface, and he's very curious. So he has made it uh, quite amazing efforts. On the nature versus nurture debate, how much um, do you feel that talent, such as your musical talent, is something that you're born with or something that you can develop? We are in Oxford now. Okay. <laughs> uh, some people has better technique, born with better technique. Uh, so you can, but one thing is important. It doesn't mean that you can work less and get a better result. One thing I believe, this is uh, from uh, Lao Tzu, you know, the great philosopher. Um, our life is building from single steps. One step followed another one, and, and another one, another one, another one. And you can't skip those steps. Age 13, the next step for Lang Lang would be to further his musical education abroad. Father and son come to America to compete for a place at the Curtis Institute in Philadelphia. It's here that he'll meet a key influence in his life, the pianist and teacher Gary Grafman, who had himself been a child prodigy and a celebrated concert pianist. When we have auditions, you can tell in, uh, literally, in 10 seconds, 30 seconds, if somebody's very talented or somebody's not talented at all. So it was very clear that this was a major talent. He did arrive, I must say, at Curtis, from what I remember, with his father and several suitcases if he had planned to stay for a while. <laughs> he knows how to become a professional performer, not just a pianist, but to have a career, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly different story, right? Slightly. So he knows how to do it, and he knows in which steps I should do it. Gary Grafman had once been a student of Vladimir Horowitz, one of the great concert pianists of all time. Remember Horowitz, you know the the tremor eye you know, he played this, and the way he, you know, the sound. And I saw, you know, in the audience, people were, you know, crying and that. I'm like, wow, that's magical, you know, that's powerful. see a great grandfather to play something for your you know your entire life and to get better and better and better and better and better I thought this is a good way to, to live Harwich made me think of the human voice all the time play this the way one would sing it can imagine where I would have to breathe. And why there may, no, no, let's maybe I hold it and breathe in a different place. That makes a huge difference. 
the incredible sound of Horowitz, derived from his right hand sound, his singing sound, darkness and much light also. Horowitz had something almost, almost diabolic. He had a blazing technique that people literally couldn't understand. It was so brilliant. It just knocked people flat. He could do things at the piano which were not humanly explicable. very happy to have worked with him. In my opinion, he would have flourished anywhere. He learned very quickly, and he was with me, I guess, five years. His father sat in on most of these lessons, or almost all of them, and took notes. A competition is a way to further your career. From my point of view, it wasn't important uh, at all from his point, or his, maybe his father's, it was very important um, because of the whole background where you have to be number one. You have to always, whatever you're doing, you win. You are, somebody else is number two. You're number one. I don't know that the father agreed with me, but, um, uh, but I insisted on it. Why? enter a competition where if you win, you play with a certain orchestra, when the conductor of that orchestra, just by hearing you, is going to engage you. What I did was invite people from New York to come and hear him. From the first note on, I was fascinated about, about I mean, the touch of the first note was special. And I felt deeply moved that a 17 years old gets so deep insight into the center of the music and what the music wants to say. Five days later, I invited him to play the Tchaikovsky concerto for the Millennium Scala of, of the Ravinia Festival. That was his breakthrough. I was the concert changed my life. San Francisco Symphony right away booked me. Detroit Symphony right away. Philadelphia. Uh, Cleveland. New York Philharmonic. And in 2003, Carnegie Hall in New York, the most celebrated of all concert venues for a classical piano recital. From day one, it's had this magnetism, and every artist has wanted to perform there. And I often go backstage after a concert, and somebody who's making their debut will just be in tears because they've waited all their life to perform there. So when they stepped out onto that platform, they were more scared and more keyed up than anywhere else they played in the world. The special thing about it is the spirits which, which, which fly around, you know, of all the people who have played there. I mean, put very literally, the world does not need pianists. It needs accountants, it needs lawyers, it needs doctors. 
So there is room for very few, and thousands of people are filled with a desperation and ambition to do this and bring it off. And you need enormous talent, enormous skill, colossal determination, and a hell of a lot of luck, too. Good evening. Uh, this is my father. When you were at Carnegie Hall, finally, you got the recognition that you wanted in America, that your father wanted. He comes and plays with you mm -hmm. on stage. And because my father basically shared his life, you know, with my career. Because he was dreaming to become a musician as well. And I thought this is a really nice idea. At the same time that I'm achieving my dream, but he's achieving his dream as well. I thought it's a beautiful moment uh, in our lives. That love that your father and your mother both have for you, it's a different kind of love. Your mother's love is a kind of love which wants to see you happy and right. succeed. exactly. What do you feel now in retrospect about your father's determination for you to win? My father is a very, uh, very pushy, you know, still quite pushy person. He just... Uh, not very relaxed. He's, um, uh, in a way, quite aggressive. Yeah. With me, he, there's always distance. And, and he realizes, I mean, he knows that. And, and maybe I want to get closer to him, but I'm a little bit afraid. You know, I'm, um, so I, I'm always also a little bit of a, a, a bit of a distance to him as well. I mean, my father and my, my mom, they're totally different personality. I, they always have the biggest different opinion in life. And, and there's always argument. And my mom totally believe in her, and my father totally believe in him. So they, they never compromise each other. But on my career, they, they made a, you know, they, they, they find there's some, <laughs> some common things, which is they all want to support me. You know. But in life, it's a, it's a different story. In Berlin, last-minute preparations are underway for a very special concert hosted by Telefonica at the O2 Arena. He is so significant to him. He feels like it's a turning point. He's grown up. He's been totally looking forward to this moment. And that's why I think the foundation this last year has been so important for him. My foundation established 2008. I believe that music will change people. Lang Lang's foundation offers financial support to young aspiring pianists 
providing them with opportunities to perform in some of the biggest concert halls in the world. Hi everyone. Hi. 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 Welcome to Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just so happy to play with you. You'll make me feel very old today. He's talked about this nurturing talent for a long time, and it's only with the onset of his 30th birthday that he seems to feel everything in his life has to be readdressed. More than anything, he seems to be moving towards the idea that he now knows enough and has a confidence in knowing enough to give back. Rush. Don't rush. Okay? Don't rush. And, and it's important. We have, we have forte, we have a piano, we have legatos, we have fortissimos, we have a big diminuendos. We need to play those things. Okay? Uh, we can't just play everything the same. Uh, we need to have a dynamics. All right? So now let's begin from the very beginning. We need to learn how to watch the conductor and how to play and how to make music as a team. When to use emotion and when to not use it and in order to have the climax and build ups. Difficult. What's been interesting to see in more recent years is that as Lang Lang's success really has arrived pretty much at the level that Lang Guaren had once imagined, Lang Lang now is the one who has in some ways the upper hand, and Lang Guaren is the one who's there helping him to pack his suitcases and helping to take care of him and to deal with various practicalities in his life. And I think there must be something very satisfying, in fact, to both of them, about having arrived at the point of that reversal. The essence of all my conversation with Lang Lang came when I said to him, you know, by many Western standards, the way that your father treated you would constitute abuse. I said, do you, do you feel like you were an abused child? And he said, if my father had treated me that way and I had not made it as a musician, I would probably have a terrible ruined life but since the pressure my father applied allowed me to become an international superstar, something I very much enjoyed being, I would say it was a wonderful way to grow up. Also drei Attribute, die genau auf lang, lang passen. Latitude Music Festival in Suffolk. But today, this crowd of thousands have something unusual in store for them. You definitely decided how were you playing. Is it a Rinian? Rinian. 
I was always ready. It's my last concert of the season. So I'm quite happy. Benefico. So pleasure, thank you. The reason he's doing Latitude is that we were looking for a platform for him to go and play to a wider public. The idea of getting an intelligent music audience in one place and putting him in front of them and seeing how they react is too much to, to pass over. Obviously, Lang Lang lives his life in a stuffy, classical, environment of the Carnegie Hall, of the Royal Albert Hall, and I love those places, I absolutely love them, but they bring a familiarity and they bring a comfort factor. Of course, he's on record about wanting people to play the piano more, enrich their lives with classical music, and lots of people are on record saying exactly the same things, but none of them do it. Thanks, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be in Latitude. And now... He's playing Chopin and Liszt. He's not going up there and playing Jay-Z or Radiohead even, you know. He's going up there and playing core repertoire. And the audience reaction, if they react in, a, in the way that we think they might do, that will justify probably everything he's done up to now. people who step outside the institutional classical world that obviously is, is, has fantastic performers in and is supporting classical music brilliantly, but it's just great when someone does just step out of the traditional framework. Unless you were brought up listening to classical music, often you'll just never really get a chance to hear it except, you know, in the background of movies or in adverts or something. And suddenly someone like Lang Lang does bring classical music to more people, so that's excellent. Oh, I would like to... Uh play the dedication by Schumann and transcript by Liszt. And I would like to dedicate this piece to all of you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. into another world when you go to hear a great pianist. But when I say another world, not an escapist one, a real world, when Debussy said once, the imaginative life is the only real life, I believe that very strongly. You're carried into a world where a lot of trivialities and pettiness and ill feeling can be resolved. Music is so much more than some sort of escapist activity. His persona is one of exuberance and charm, and he's delightful, and he's fun. Then when he plays the music, the thing that he does best is to convey pain and loss and sorrow. He conveys a kind of anguish. Those early traumas, they're there in the music, and I think it may be too early to know how they play out in his, in his life.
think the mere fact that a certain number of people sit down to hear the same piece of music that's being played at that moment, you experience a whole lifetime. And an artist who has the talent, the capacity and the intelligence to convey that and make this collective group of people feel that has done something very important and this is the power of music. Music starts from nothing and ends in nothing, just as we start from nothing and end in nothing. And this is what is important. On the way next on BBC One, the biographical drama set in 1950s Australia following the talents of a piano genius in Shine. <laughs>